Sports presents the National Football League. Today, it's the Cincinnati Bengals versus the Los Angeles Raiders. And here in Los Angeles, the weather is absolutely perfect. Entirely different than the rest of the United States. 56 degrees, a bit of a breeze. It is partly cloudy. Right now, in the AFC West, Kansas City is losing to Houston, so the Raiders could well, with a win here, move out in front. Now, the Central Division, Pittsburgh has won. It looks as if Houston is going to win, so Cincinnati is going to have to win to stay even. And we are set to go. And Boomer Esiason is going to start for Cincinnati. The Raiders won the toss. They'll be receiving. That means that Lee Johnson will be kicking off for Cincinnati. Jamie Holland and Ron Brown are the deep backs on the return. And here is a speech to Ron Brown at the 7. And he goes down at the 10-yard line. We'll take a look at the offensive set for the Raiders. Their offensive line possibly the best single part of their team. They continue to control the line of scrimmage. Backs and receivers. Marcus Allen, Bo Jackson, they'll continue to alternate at running back. Steve Smith will be doing the blocking. The Raiders will go to three wide receivers. Smith will come out, and Tim Brown will come in. And the Raiders go to work at their own, just outside their own 10-yard line. And here is Marcus Allen. And he will go out to the 14. The Cincinnati defense, their front seven, they will feature number 50, linebacker James Francis, leading candidate for Defensive Rookie of the Year honors. When Cincinnati goes to their nickel, the other three linebackers will come out. Jason Buck comes in to rush the passer, along with Barney Busty and Mitchell Price. They join a secondary that has been decimated by injuries, losing Ricky Dixon with a broken leg and Lewis Billups, who is out for this game with an ankle injury. Second down and seven and Schrader to throw. Drops it off over the middle. It is incomplete. Good defensive play by David Fulcher. Allen, the intended receiver. Oh, I thought that was a little bit of a catchable ball. Jay Schrader made his decision right away that he was going to go to Marcus in a more conservative mode. Marcus Allen not that effective this year in catching the ball, but Jay Schrader had made his mind up way too soon. Third down. Jim Brown comes in, three wide receivers. Marcus stays in the block. Tipped, it is incomplete, and Skip McClendon got a hand on it. Fernandez, possibly the intended receiver, will be forced out. Yeah. Cincinnati came with a blitz. They came with six people, and the Raiders did an excellent job of picking it up. Schrader had plenty of time and actually could have run for this. Take a look in the middle of your screen as he steps up. Marcus does a good job picking up Barney Bussey. He's got plenty of room, and right there he throws it practically right into the hands there of McClendon, who is the spy in that circumstance, and does a good job of deflecting the pass. So Jeff Gossett will be kicking Mitchell Price. The rookie from Tulane is the return man. And he takes it at the 43. And he will return it to the 47-yard line. Vance Mueller was down to make the tackle. 39 yards in the kick, 5 yards on the return, and the Cincinnati offense comes onto the field. Their offensive line, strong and healthy, anchored by nine times pro bowler Anthony Munoz, one of the great offensive linemen in the history of the game. And backs and receivers, they break very quickly with this no-huddle offense. And that is what we will be seeing. So you've got to kind of stay loose when you cover Cincinnati. And as you notice, he is there, Boomer Esiason. And he gives off to James Brooks, and there's nothing there. It'll be second down and ten. And the other thing you might have noticed from Cincinnati's standpoint is that Eric Ball starting for Icky Woods. Icky bothered by some rib injuries. Greg Townsend with the tackle. Sam Weiss, the head coach of Cincinnati. 
Ricky Ellison was excited to make that play. You could see how animated he was. Charlie, a lot of the reason for that is last week on the Monday night game against the Detroit Lions against the run and shoot, Ricky Ellison, the middle linebacker, played all of three plays. So he's, he's got a lot of energy. He ain't tired. Second down. And here is Brooks. Back to the line of scrimmage. Lionel Washington, it'll be third down and ten. Raiders defense, their front seven, led by number 93, Greg Townsend. He's having a Pro Bowl season. Every week, he makes something happen. When the Raiders go to their nickel package, Bob Golick and two linebackers will come out. Aaron Wallace comes in as a down lineman, along with Torin Dorn and Gary Lewis, who join a secondary that is markedly different from the Raiders in the past. They're playing a lot of zone defense rather than strictly man-to-man. Charlie, I think that's one of the reasons why they want to go to the hurry up. They want to force them to not get six defensive backs in there to play their wide receivers match. Boomer play action, first down as he goes to the tight end, Rodney Holman. A gain of 14, Mike Harden with the tackle. Rodney Holman is probably the best tight end in the AFC. And I talked with Sam Weiss yesterday. He says, we definitely have to use him more. There he has Mike Harden in coverage man for man. And really, it's just a simple in route. Mike Harden doesn't make the close. And that's too big of a body to arm tackle. Rodney Holman there for the first down. Pro Bowler the last two seasons. You get a chance to see his numbers. Not overwhelming, but as Sam Weiss says, we need to get him the ball more. In this set, Eric Ball is the remaining back. Brooks comes out as a wide receiver. He is in the slot on the left side. He's going to get a yard from the 41 to the 40-yard line of the Raiders. It'll be second down and nine as Bob Golick was there to meet him. One of the things that Cincinnati is experimenting with is they go to the different fronts. You'll notice that when they, they stretched Rodney Holman out into a wide receiver situation, they had him man for man on a linebacker. And I think that Sam Weiss, just be is paying attention, is going to take advantage of that maybe later on because a linebacker man for man, Rodney Holman, is definitely a mismatch in favor of the Bengals. Tyson to throw. Rose throws back in the coverage. It is caught. Tim McGee, 41 yards and the touchdown. And for McGee, that is his first touchdown of the year. And they went into double coverage. Charlie, I will bet you right here a hundred dollars that he was throwing that ball to Tim Brown. Look at this. This is just a clear out route. He's not part of this at all. He's throwing to Tim Brown coming the other direction. Look at Tim Brown coming into the screen. Eddie Anderson doesn't turn around quick enough. McGee is the only one looking back for the ball. He's got a tremendous advantage. He sees the ball coming. He gets the catch. As you mentioned, take a look at those numbers. Last year, this was somebody who caught over 1,100 yards with 65 catches. And this is his first touchdown of the season on his 39th catch. Now, we have a stoppage of play and a conference, so we are assuming that we are having a review. The only thing that I could think of, Charlie, possibly, was when Boomer Esiason was rolling out. This is definitely a catch, but Boomer Esiason might have been close to the line of scrimmage. That might be what they're looking at, because this was certainly a catch. They thought that that might be dual possession, but definitely no, not. No, he, he has that away. totally. The officials knew it right away. Look at that. Touchdown. And the extra point is good. And Cincinnati moves on top, 7 to nothing. And let's look at Boomer as he was rolling out to the left. This is the one thing you cannot do with a groin injury. It doesn't look to me like he's limping at all here. Is he favoring that leg? doesn't look like it to me. How close is he to the line of scrimmage? Take a look right here. There's the, there's the line marker. Oh, he's plenty. He's got a yard, yard and a half to spare. That was, look at the way he threw that. That was an absolute prayer. And he was going to Eddie Brown, I guarantee you. McGee happened to be there. 53 yards in the drive and five plays. Like they say sometimes, better to be lucky than good, doesn't it? It's always better to be lucky than good. <laughs> so with 10.57 left to go in the first quarter, Cincinnati moves on top by a score of seven to nothing. And so Lee Johnson will be kicking off. 
Art Shell had warned his team before the game. He says, listen, don't even listen to any of the rumors about Boomer Esiason until I see him on the sidelines in street clothes. Boomer Esiason is playing in this game. And obviously, they know not right now, not only is he playing, he's playing well. Jamie Holland and Ron Brown are the deep backs on the return. And at the two-yard line, here's Ron Brown. And he returns to the 25-yard line where Lynn James makes the stop. Check of the ticker. Houston big over Kansas City in the fourth quarter. Pittsburgh by three. That's a final over New Orleans. Miami defeats Seattle. Fourth quarter, Tampa Bay leading Minnesota. And a final, Dallas does it again. You know, magic in that city. Indianapolis, a final over the Jets. And Cleveland leading Atlanta. And in the other two late games that have just started, there's no score. Here, Cincinnati seven, and the Raiders nothing. And Los Angeles has the ball first down at own 25, and Schrader comes out throwing. And he goes deep, and the pass gets away. It is incomplete. Fernandez had a hand on it, could not pull it in. When I talked to Fernandez yesterday, Mervyn asked me, he said, who's your broadcast partner? And I said, Todd Christensen. And he said, oh, we better catch every pass, because Todd always caught every pass, and he is going to be on us if we don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's no. what he said. I'm very magnanimous. <laughs> here, you got to give credit to Carl Carter. Take a look. He has a slant route. He comes up right here. He's got in his hands, but Carl Carter gets the arm right in there and knocks the ball loose. Good play by number 45, Carl Carter, for a much maligned secondary for the Cincinnati Bengals. And here's Marcus Allen. Steve Smith with a lead block. He's got five yards to the 30. It'll be third down and five. You know, David Fulcher with the tackle. Charlie, a lot has been said about the problems that Cincinnati has had defensively, particularly against the run. They're giving up 4.7 yards per rush, which is the second worst in the league. But their pass defense happens to be also last in the AFC. So I think that maybe the Raiders might have been a little bit overconfident early on here, anticipating the fact that they could uh, do whatever they wanted. There you can see Dick LeBeau, the defensive coordinator for the Bengals, trying to come up with his whatever he can to stop this silver and black offense. Third down and five. Brown is in. Smith comes out. Marcus Allen, the remaining back. Marcus stays in the block. Brady pass underneath the coverage. The tight end, Ethan Horton. This is close to the first down marker. Carl Carter with the tackle. This is an interesting mark. Where he caught the ball was across the line, but it was a good hit there to move him back, and now they're going to have to measure. So Jim Tunney, the referee, will bring it out. And the chains will tell the tale. It was third down and five. 9.46 is the time remaining in the first quarter. Cincinnati scored in their first offensive possession. They lead 7 to nine. And this is the second offensive possession for the Raiders. And the Bengals lead it 7 I think it is a first down. Jay Schrader is getting excellent protection, but right here, if you're going to get a chance to look at the top of your screen, watch the left tackle. Watch number 60, Rory Graves, coming back. Watch him just look at the takedown right there, just to the right of your screen. It's like Ray Chester used to tell me when I was playing. If you can get away with it, it's a good play. First down, Raiders. Steve Smith. That is only the third reception of the year for Steve Smith. You know, and this is something that I addressed to Art Shell yesterday. One of the problems that the Raiders have had has been getting the ball to their running backs in catching situations. Steve Smith in 1988 had eight touchdown catches. There was somebody who was integral into the offense of the Raiders. Those four running backs for the Raiders have only combined for, prior to that one, 20 catches this season, with Marcus Allen only catching 13 heading into this game. Second and three. And here is Smith. He's got the first down. Flag is down. He goes to the 46-yard line of Cincinnati, but we'll check out the first marker of the game. Solomon Wilcox and Rod Jones make the tackle. This hole they won't get away with. Steve Smith knows his role, is what Art Shell told us yesterday. He is the one that's designed to go in there and be the battering ram. He that's is what he said, yeah, battering. Because when we the way he came up, he said, well, what, right, what about Marcus? Holding 65, still second down. Well, we see he and Bo in there together, and he said, no way. They're there to run the ball. They are not a battering ram. The man who is, is number 35, Steve Smith. Interestingly, if they would catch the old bangle, Max Montoya is the one who got caught holding. I'm sure that he said to the official, that's no way, no way. Those are teammates of mine. I'd never do anything illegal. Yeah, right. And here's Marcus. The 
pass across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Seven, eight yard gain there. I'm sure people are asking themselves the question, you know, Bo Jackson last year had a mammoth game against the Cincinnati Bengals, including that 192 yard touchdown run. Why isn't he in the game right now? Art Shell told us that he does it by feel. He says there's nothing scientific about it. He says that if I feel good about the way one guy is going or another guy is going, I'll go with him regardless because I know that that puts the pressure on the defense because whoever is back there is guaranteed to have fresh legs. Here's the option to Marcus. And he goes to the 44-yard line. He needed four. He only got three, so it'll be fourth down. And that means that Jeff Gossett will come in to kick. It's not to, to a Tagaloa made the tackle. Couldn't wait to say that I have name. to take a breath <laughs> between the first and the second name. We'll get it, but we have to take that deep breath. This is definitely an audible play. They had the three right receivers to the left side, and Jay Schrader felt that he could audible out to the option. Certainly, Jay Schrader at 6'4", 215 is not going to make anybody forget Jack Mildren. He pitched just a little bit too soon there. He didn't com commit the defensive end soon enough. And Marcus is just a little bit short. Here's the kick. Mitchell Price is the return man. And he'll stay away from it. It'll be down around the 25 or the 26-yard line. They're arguing whether or not it might have hit the back leg of one of the Bengals. <laughs> and Ethan Horton comes up with it. But did it hit somebody? The, the ruling is that it was touched by a Raider. And it becomes dead at that but point. did a Raider touch it first? There's the bounce. Looks as if they're arguing off of the heel of Barney Bussey. They're arguing that it came off the heel of Barney Bussey. You can see right there everybody's saying, get up, get up, get up. It's difficult to tell because of the angle of the bounce of the ball as to whether or not it hit him. And now they're going to review it. Be reviewed. Now realize on the review that they see only what you have seen at home. By the receiver team. You're going to get a chance to see right over here amongst this group right here. Does it hit Barney Bussey on the heel? That's the angle that you have to look at right there. Does it hit him on the heel or does it just take a bounce? Now you can see he turns right around, which would indicate to you, I know that that's an intangible, but the way he turned around would indicate, yes, indeed, it did hit me. Now look at him, look to the side. What? Not, not me. Not me. I think Cincinnati might have got away with one there because it was very close to the heel and the reaction of Barney Bussey would seem to indicate to me that it did hit him. And that's the best replay that we have. And so Cincinnati takes over at their own 26-yard line. They leave Shannon and Huggett. And Eric Ball is the ball carrier. And he's going to have a yard, maybe two on the play, and that's going to be just about it. As Jerry Robinson comes in to make the tackle. Jerry Robinson does a good job of playing some outstanding football. In two days, he will be having his 34th birthday. Jerry Robinson, a former pro bowler from the Philadelphia Eagles, now playing outside backer for the Raiders. Plays every down, one of the few linebackers who still plays in the inside in passing situations. But I should mention here with regards to Jerry Robinson, you notice he's having to come out and man for man when they flex out either James Brook or Rodney Holman. I'm surprised that the Bengals have not taken advantage of that. Play action to Harold Green and the pass is dropped by Jim Riggs. It'll be third down and seven. Standard fake counter Trey had him open, had a first down. And Greg Townsend was putting the pressure on. So the only big play we have seen thus far with six and a half minutes left to go in the first quarter, the touchdown pass from Boomer Esaias into Tim McGee and covered 41 yards. And since then, it's just been pick and two. Third and seven. Play action play. Boomer steps away, good agility. It is intercepted off of the tip. Ricky Ellison has the interception. His first of the year. Eddie Brown couldn't pull it in. Well, that really wasn't Eddie Brown's fault. Boomer Esiason does a good job of getting away from the pressure, but in rolling to his right and throwing back across his body left-handed, 
he throws it behind Eddie Brown. Eddie Brown trying to reach back and make a great catch. Watch what happens here as he cushions the ball and it goes straight up in the air and it's an easy interception there for Ricky Ellison. And Bo Jackson is in the ball game. Ricky Ellison doesn't play much on passing downs, Charlie. That's his first interception as a Raider. And here is Bo Jackson. And he is out of bounds at the 24. He's got three. It'll be second down and seven. Carl Carter knocked him out. Steve Smith laid a good block. I thought Bo was going to cut inside him when he went to the right there. It looked like he had a little more room inside. But what happens when you run the 40 and 418 is you trust your speed. And if I'd have had that kind of speed, maybe I would have too. Average five and a half yards leads the NFL. Charlie, he has a career average with the Raiders of 5.4 yards per carry. Just to put that into perspective, the all-time leader in average per carry was Jimmy Brown with an average of 5.2. Steve Smith with a key block opens the whole ball to the 10. 14 yards, first down. David Fulcher and Solomon Wilcox with the tackle. Charlie, one of the one of the few people in the National Football League that I genuinely believe fans come to see as opposed to their teams is Bo Jackson. Look at the excitement he generates. He cuts into the secondary with that speed, runs through arm tackles, got away with them there as David Fulcher jerked on his face mask and the official missed it. It is a first down right at the 10-yard line. And ball goes to the six-yard line. It'll be second down. Charlie Crumry with the tackle. Charlie, what I meant by that point is that, you know, in the other sports, in baseball and basketball, a lot of times you go to see individuals. You go to see a Michael Jordan dunk, or you go to see a Jose Canseco hit a home run or strike out. A lot of times in football, I think a lot, the support of the fans comes for the group, for the team. I root, root, root for the home team. I'm a Charger fan. I'm a Raider fan. I'm a Bengal fan. Bo Jackson with his great ability in both sports has actually superseded that. I genuinely believe that he is one of the few, if the only man in the National Football League, that people genuinely pay to see. And here he is again. This time he is stopped just inside the five-yard line, where it will be third down. Well, that was Steve Smith well, that was, in that I'm situation. Sorry, Steve Smith, number 35. Well, that's, what, that's what happens. I was he, expecting that. Bo distraction, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Has to be Bo. Of course it's Bo. Talking so much about Bo, he forgets about he's he he his jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Clever of him. <laughs> and you know what's tough on Steve Smith? We mentioned earlier his role as a, you know, as somewhat of a spear carrier, the guy that punches it in. He is a very good runner, and he is a very good pass receiver, but he never gets the chance because of the greatness of both Allen and Jackson. And now Marcus Allen is back in. is in motion, straight to the throw. Our side pass is complete to Brown, touchdown. to welcome those of you who have just watched Houston, Kansas City. As you know, the Oilers won that one, 27 to 10. And here, Tim Brown just accepted a touchdown pass from Jay Schrader of five yards. Here is the extra point. And this ball game is tied at seven. We'll go back and take a look at the touchdown. Well, this is two weeks in a row now for Tim Brown. Tim Brown is just going to cut across the screen on a crossing pattern right there. He runs the out, and Solomon Wilcox isn't, isn't able to keep up with him. Wilcox is a safety. Got caught there by Jones inside Christensen. 3.54, the time remaining in the first quarter. We are tied here at 7. And for Tim Brown, you just saw him score only the second touchdown of the season. Price and Jimmy are the deep backs on the return. Stanford Jennings outside the 20, then at the 23, comes clear to the 25 and brought down at the 26 yard line by Dan Lamb. We've got a timeout and we are tied. Cincinnati 7 and the Raiders 7. 
Here in Los Angeles, we are tied at 7-7. I'm Charlie Jones along with Todd Christensen, Boomer Esaias and playing, and he's moving around pretty well. Are you surprised? Yeah, I really am. He didn't look very good yesterday at all. I thought he was going to be in a lot of pain, but it's amazing what adrenaline will do for you, <laughs> and the fact that your two divisional rivals just won. That's enough impetus for him to play. So there is a lot of impetus on both sides, and we will look at the standings in the Central Division and in the West to give you an idea of just exactly what's happening today. Well, I think that that is something they have to consider. I think that maybe they felt like the last two games of the season were more important. Those are games they had to have, and maybe they can let this one slide. I don't think so anymore because of the fact that I think that they didn't expect Houston to beat Kansas City, and I'm not sure they expected Pittsburgh to win in New Orleans. And here is the Central Division. This is updated with Houston and Pittsburgh both winning, so Cincinnati right now have a record of 7-6. and six. And Cleveland, they won their ball game, so congratulations to the Cleveland Browns. Their record now is 3-11. and 11. The size and over the middle, and all alone is Rodney Holman. And Holman out of bounds at the 31-yard line of the Raiders. Holman, the tight end, rambles for 53 yards. Well, of course Rodney Holman went for 50-some yards. Those tight ends, man, they can run. They got some serious speed. This is a bad decision on the part of the Raider defense. Take a look. Jerry Robinson, who would have had him in man coverage, goes right past him. Look at that. He sneaks underneath. You can see Holman is all alone. Jerry Robinson had him in coverage and decided to blitz, and the Raiders end up costing him. It ends up costing him, and Lionel Washington able to run him down, but not before he gets a big, big game. I guess Sam Weiss wasn't kidding. He said he was going to use him more, and that's exactly what's happened here. Two big catches here in the first quarter. And James Brooks with a flag down. Brooks to the 26-yard line if the play stands up. Penalty flag on the play. John Lee against Cincinnati. When we went away for the commercial, Cincinnati was penalized 10 yards for an illegal holding block. 78. Still first down. That is holding against Anthony Munoz. Uh, they were penalized on the uh, the kickoff return. That's the reason when we went away, the football was in one place, and when we came back, it was at another on the field. Second time they've been penalized in this drive, but so far it really hasn't affected that much. No, it doesn't exactly look like we're heading for a defensive struggle, does it? Boomer Esiason's groin doesn't seem to be bothering him. He's throwing the ball tremendously well, and the way Bo Jackson ran in that last drive, if that's any indication of the rest of the day, we're going to have a lot of yardage. First down and 20 at the 41-yard line. Ricky Ellison and Scott Davis on the tackle. Davis, number 70 for the Raiders. He talked with Art Shell. He said he's always used size, but now he is using technique. And he's doing an excellent job of it. Not only does he have eight sacks, which is quite high, he has a tremendous haircut. I love that coiffure. Interestingly enough, Charlie, a lot of people didn't realize this. When he got drafted by the Raiders, he happened to be in jail at the time. He would had some scuffle, and they said this guy was made to play for the silver and black. 85 offense, penalty is accepted, and will still be first down. Holding on Tim McGee. But all seriousness aside, he really has been playing quite well this year, as witnessed by those eight sacks and 50-plus tackles. Anthony Munoz has been shaken up on the play and is being administered to at the 42 yard line. Cleveland Browns 13, Atlanta Falcons 10. And we've got an injury timeout. We'll be back in just a moment. Anthony Munoz on the far sideline with 2.34 to go in the first quarter. And it's first down and 30 for Cincinnati. Back at their own 49-yard line. Paul Kuchan has replaced Munoz in that offensive line. And this is a screen. Spelled out originally by Scott Davis, who was floating in the neighborhood. Jennings on the receiving end, and Lionel Washington with the tackle. And a loss of four, maybe five more yards. Excellent defensive play for the Raiders. Interestingly enough, the replacement of Jatan for Munoz, I really think, gave that away. What the offensive tackle has to do is he has to give the defensive end the illusion that he has beaten him. What Jatan did there is he just backed up and almost gave an open door to Davis, and Davis wasn't stupid. He waited behind and, as you say, screwed up the play and let Washington come up to make the play and eliminate with a five-yard loss. Now here is the... What? 
Boomer. Who's the wide receiver? Are you kidding wide me? Wide receiver, a direct snap to James. And he goes to the 44-yard line of the Raiders. That's Liz James, the rookie from Arizona State, taken in the fifth round of the draft. And when Sam White throws he says, we have a wrinkle or two. A wrinkle or two. <laughs> and that is wrinkle one. I'm sure there's wrinkle two still waiting on it. I'm now, what the, when, he, when he gives a finger like it, swings around, same personnel. No changes in personnel. Well, everybody had to assume that they were going to go somewhere out here to the right. Look at Scott Davis. He's uncertain. Where are they going? They thought James might throw, and all of a sudden he uses that great speed and cuts up for a big gainer. Man, they're anything, they're anything but dull, this Cincinnati bunch. That's great. At the Los Angeles 44-yard line. Oh, sure. Now we need the timeout. Now he takes the timeout. He's confused. He's behind the center. He doesn't know what to do there. I'm not supposed to be here. I'm a wide receiver. <laughs> 45 seconds, time remaining, first quarter. We are tied at seven in the Coliseum. We'll be back in a moment. For you young people out there, this is how not to get out in your two-point stance as a wide receiver. But look at Torridorn. He turns and starts to run. He thinks that Boomer's going to beat him deep. That kind of Charlie, I would think of a guy wearing number 46 would know better than that, but they're not going to throw to number seven out there. Oh, and in, when they look at the tapes on Monday, <laughs> I had him covered. That's I had right. him covered. <laughs> Of course, on the other side in Cincinnati, Boomer's going to say, I had a beat. Third and 23. Boomer in the shotgun. Still no signs of that groin, but he has been moving around. And he's going to be sacked for the first time. Aaron Wallace got it. His seventh sack of the year for the rookie from Texas A&M. Charlie, he went right over Ken Moyer, the replacement for Anthony Munoz. Take a look right here. You're going to get a chance to see that's Moyer, the replacement, and here's Wallace, and he's just going to come up field with a rip move and get outside of him. You just cannot replace a nine-time Pro Bowler like Anthony Munoz. Look at Wallace, just too fast for Moyer, almost strips the ball, gets Boomer for the sack. And Lee Johnson will be kicking, and Tim Brown is the return man. A couple of nice moves at the 25, returns to around the 27 of the 28-yard line. 36 yards on the kick, 14 yards on the return. Let's check out the 10-minute ticker. It's a final, Houston over Kansas City. That's a big one by 17. Pittsburgh by three over New Orleans, and Miami defeats Seattle. These are all the early games. Tampa Bay wins, downing Minnesota. Dallas big over Phoenix, and Phoenix really been playing well recently. The Colts over the Jets, and Cleveland with a victory in the late games. Philadelphia leading Green Bay by seven. No score, San Diego and Denver. And here we are tied at 7-7 with only 12 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Charlie, a quick note on that Houston game. Warren moved through for over 500 yards. The fake to Bo Jackson and the reverse to Fernandez, and all that will really do is run out the clock here in the first quarter. That is the end of the first period, and the score is Cincinnati 7 and the Raiders 7. My amigo Juan just came out from Mexico, so I'm introducing him to our American friend Larry and our favorite beer, Miller Lite. Now from Porfido. Juan, me Miller Lite the gusto porque. It tastes uh, muy bueno. Larry. Ladies, me muscle calories and no gusto filioppo. El comprende? No, not really. <laughs> For mucho great taste, there's only one light beer, Miller Lite. Does your friend speak any English? <laughs> This is Charlie Jones along with Todd Christensen. Sundretch Coliseum in Los Angeles. Absolutely a gorgeous day. The statistics in the first quarter. Well, of this, the significant statistic there is the Bengals passing. And of course, half of that is on that big play to Tim McGee. 40 yards rushing for the Raiders bodes well because they want to get both going and Marcus as well. The turnover by the Bengals turned out to be consequential because that's the one they were able to punch in for the touchdown, the interception by Ricky Ellison. Second down. Bo Jackson is the remaining back. Raiders pass is incomplete. There was a misread, possibly by Willie Gall or by Bo, because 
nobody was where they were supposed to be. At least they were not where Schrader thought they were supposed to be. Well, one of the things that Art Shell to told us about Bo Jackson is he's having a hard time getting into the passing game. He's, he doesn't understand things quite yet. Right there, he threw. <laughs> somebody had to be there because he threw it right between both Golf and Bo Jackson. And my guess is probably Bo that misread the coverage. Third down and 11. Greater 3 of 7 for 18 yards. The touchdown to Jim Brown. Four man rush. Greater has protection, wants to go deep. Everybody is covered. He goes short to the right side, trying just to pick up the first down. It is incomplete. Hats have to go off to that secondary of the Cincinnati Bengals, Charlie. You're absolutely right. Jay Schrader had plenty of time, plenty of time to get it in there. The coverage was just too good. So it is fourth down, and Jeff Gossett will be kicking. This is Mitchell Price, the return man. The rookie from Tulane taken in the ninth round of the draft. Curious play calling there, too, I might add. You know, especially if Bo was running there at the end of that last drive, you'd have thought that they'd have kept going with that, but instead they went with the reverse and two passes. And Cincinnati has had a problem stopping the run. And Sam Weiss told us he figured that the Raiders were going to run it down their throat. So you're right. Great. Kick is not that good. Takes a bingo bounce back to the Raider 49-yard line. A kick of only 22 yards. And so Cincinnati with excellent field position when we come back. Good news for Cincinnati fans. Anthony Munoz is back in the ballgame. Schrader bundled up on the part, on the sideline for the Raiders. There is Munoz. When we talked with his former teammate, Max Montoya, who is now, of course, with the Raiders, uh, we asked you about going up against his... He said, it's overrated going against your old team. He said, but I do miss Anthony. We were roommates on the road, and I would always... We had a ritual. I would leave a little bag of M&M peanuts on his bed at night in the hotel room. <laughs> that explains why he's 285. Play action fake. Spence is being chased by Howie Long. Throws this one. Reed Reality was throwing it away, and James Brooks came down with it but out of bounds. What a terrific catch oh, by yeah. James Brooks, even though it was out of bounds. Howie Long forced that play, did a good job escaping inside. Five foot nine and 180 pounds, James Brooks, formerly of the San Diego Chargers. A lot of people don't realize that James Brooks is the all-time leading rusher in a season. He holds the season record for the Cincinnati Bengals, which he got last year with 1,239 yards. And he also has the second-best record. And on a team that has the history of the Essex Johnsons and the Pete Johnsons and the Paul Robinsons, you don't figure a guy 5'9", 180 would rush for over 1,200 yards, but that's exactly what James Brooks did last year. And here is Brooks breaking tackles as he goes to the 43-yard line. So it'll be third down and five. Ricky Ellison with the, with the stop. A reminder, at the end of today's broadcast, McDonald's and NBC will be announcing the Ronald McDonald Children's Charities Player of the Game. Ball game tied, 7-7, with 14.09 left to go in the first half. Sison changing the play with hand signals. The pass is incomplete, and there is no flag as the intended receiver and the defender both went down, Lynn James and Torn Dorn. It'll be fourth down. Big win for Houston today. Boy, it was a big win. Very surprising in Kansas City. And take a look at the numbers for Warren Moon. 27 for 45, 527 yards and three touchdowns. That, that record is only exceeded by the 554 yards of Norm Van Brocklin back in 1951 against the New York Yankees when he was a Los Angeles Ram. What a day for Warren Moon. Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy yet. You're absolutely right. Here's Lee Johnson. And it will go into the end zone for the touchback. We'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. We've got a timeout. Cincinnati 7 and the Raiders 7. Absolutely gorgeous day in Los Angeles. Look at this.
clear. Woo. Man, this is one of those deals where it's healthful air, finally. You get that healthful air quality. And this is the way it was throughout the 20s and the 30s. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't around that. I day. know you were, yeah, but it was gorgeous then, too. <laughs> Here's Bo Jackson, and he's going to lose a couple, maybe a three. James Francis, the rookie from Baylor, having an excellent year. Well, he really is. James Francis leads the team in both tackles and sacks. Mm -hmm. Uh, James Francis with 67 tackles and 8 sacks and really the only rookie who's having a comparable season in the entire National Football League as a defenseman would be Mark Carrier, the free safety for the Chicago Bears, who's having an excellent season. But Francis has really helped that Cincinnati defense, which quite frankly has been beleaguered this season. No change in the other two games that are going on now. No change here. We're still tied at 7. Check it down 13. 12 and a half minutes. Time remaining in the first half. Play action by Schrader has time. Good protection. And the pass is complete to Fernandez down the sideline and out of bounds at the 49 yard line. Well, sooner or later, the pressure was going to be just a little bit too much for that secondary of the Bengals. Jay Schrader just gets way too much time here, and Mervin Fernandez actually breaks his route off. He's running kind of an in route, and then he jogs to the outside when he sees that Schrader is wide open and continues to have the time that he has. Take a look at this. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. Fernandez is able to get to the outside, break his pattern off, and have a little bit of a gap, enable him to get 32 yards on the play. Fernandez yesterday, right before practice, was working out with a tennis ball. They were throwing tennis ball back to each other. He said it's good for eye-hand coordination. You know what? When I was a kid, I read that when Henry Aaron was hitting all those home runs, they asked him one of the reasons, and he said it was because he squeezed tennis balls. So I figured it was good enough for Henry Aaron, it was good enough for me, and now it's good enough for Mervyn Fernandez. <laughs> and it's good enough for Marcus Allen to carry here to the 45-yard line of Cincinnati. He'll pick up six on the play. It'll be second down and four. We, we asked Marcus Jesse about alternating with Bo. He said, you know, it can, it can lengthen your career because you're not going to get beat up. He said the downside is you never get in shape to play a full game. So if Bo gets hurt or if I get hurt, and either one of us has to play a full game because we alternate in practice also, we're not in that kind of a shape. And Steve Smith, who's getting a workout today. Well, it's the difference, Charlie, between quantity and quality years. I think that if you were to ask Marcus Allen, would you like to play 13 years and play this way, or say play only 11 years and play the way you've played the last five years, he'd say, I'll take the latter any day. He loves to get his hands on that football. And having been a teammate of Marcus Allen's, I know that this is one of those people that's in shape. He does not get tired, even though he is now on the north side of 30. And in addition, one of the nice men of the world. He is oh, he's nice to you, sure. Good. But nobody's nice to you. Hey, <laughs> you've got a point. <laughs> Raider third down and three passes over the middle. It's Tim Brown. And Brown is going to score his second touchdown of the game from 44 yards away. Once again, give a lot of credit to that front five for the Los Angeles Raiders doing an outstanding job of keeping keeping people off of Jay Schrader. Take a look at Tim Brown right here, jogging to the inside. This is a zone route. Now look at number 50 in the middle, James Francis. Look at him right there. He doesn't follow the ball. Now I don't know why James Francis is in the secondary anyway. That's their best pass rusher, Charlie. Why would he be going back and backpedaling to the middle of the field? Cincinnati got caught in the wrong defense there. And the extra point is good. And the Raiders lead for the first time in the ball game, 14 to 7. And the reaction of Jay Schrader as we step aside. We'll be back in a moment. Bo knows baseball. Bo knows football. Bo knows basketball, too. Bo knows tennis? No. Bo knows weight. Bo, you don't know diddly. Ten 
10.32 time remaining. Tim Brown, number 81, had scored only one touchdown this season prior to today's game. He has two in this game. Two receptions, two touchdowns. Stanford Jennings of the Bengals under the 26 as he makes his cut at the 19 was touched down there just shy of the 20 yard line by Dan Lamb. Charlie, Tim Brown, as you mentioned, only one coming into this game, and that one was the one handed catch he had last Monday night against the Detroit Lions. So Tim Brown's three touchdowns have all come in the course of about six days. I'm happy for him, too. You know, he had the reconstructive knee surgery. The very first game, missed the entire 89 season. A lot of people have debated and argued over the fact that now he's not the same, his knee's bugging him, but you couldn't tell over these last two weeks. You've got to be excited for somebody, the former Heisman Trophy winner at Notre Dame. And here is Brooks, and he's going to lose a yard. Greg Townsend was there along with Mike Arden. Well, Greg Townsend is going to get the tackle here, but Mike Harden is the one that created the problem. Coming up from his strong safety position, you'll see to the right of your screen, Mike Harden will come up and collide with the guard and alter the path of James Brooks. Right here, you'll see he has to jump right there. Townsend picks up the garbage. Eric Ball wasn't able to get out in front and knock Townsend off the ball, as not too many do anyway. <laughs> Greg Townsend, as I mentioned time after time, Charlie, is absolutely the best player that has never played in a Pro Bowl, but I have a hunch that this year that's finally going to change. And it should change. He is really having a great season. Boomer we'll goes for our side. Pass is complete. It's going to be good for a yard, maybe a yard and a half. And that's going to be the extent of it as Eddie Anderson and Lionel Washington were right there. They're down in nine at the 21. Thomas Benson in on the tackle as well. Interestingly enough, both inside linebackers for the Los Angeles Raiders, Ricky Ellison and Thomas Benson, are courtesy of Plan B. They were Plan B free agents acquired by the Raiders. And this is something the Raiders have done well over the last two years in acquiring Plan B free agents, and the draft as well have helped them immeasurably. Ricky Woods is in the ballgame for Cincinnati. Now the wide receivers come in to change the play. And Boomer takes the timeout to stop the clock. Charlie, here is part of the problem with the no huddle, with all the creation, with the speed up the offense, is that you get up there and if you see a defense that you don't like, there's nothing you can do about it. Now he's now he starts shouting and you got a wide receiver that's so far out he can't hear him. And now for an update in the National Football League, let's go to New York and Bob Cossett. Bob? Charlie at Arrowhead today, a huge day for Warren Moon. Three more touchdown passes in the Chiefs' 27, rather Houston's 27-10 win over the Chiefs. He's got 32 to lead the league, but look at the yardage, 527. Second all-time for a single game, only to Norm Van Brocklin, and the Oilers beat the Chiefs 27-10. Thank you, Bob. Should we tell him? <laughs> nah, let's not. <laughs> Bob. We scooped you, bet. Todd, Todd had that scoop earlier. <laughs> he was chasing, Todd was all over the press box checking the old numbers. As the game was progressing, he had an update on the Warren Moon. Oh, man, I knew that one. I got a kick out of that. Third and nine, six in the secondary. Here's a quick snap. And James Brooks is stopped right at the line of scrimmage by Bob Golan. Golick and Townsend didn't get fooled by that at all. Bob Golick is actually having a pretty good season. Four sacks for a nose guard, and he also leads the team in tackles with 72. And also as a brand new father, their first child, Jim McCaffrey, born this past week. He said, you know, I was Santa Claus at a children's hospital this week, and all of a sudden I looked at all the kids in the hospital with a different perspective now that I have a little baby daughter. I'll bet, and I can almost guarantee you that she will never, ever play any nose tackle. <laughs> And Cincinnati has the ball. I believe it was Mitchell Price. Yes, number 32, Mitchell Price, who recovers the fumble. Well, there's Tim Brown. He's frustrated. Right after we've been talking about how great he's been playing, he comes up and makes the right decision. You don't want to let this ball bounce and give up field position, but right there, he's running before he has it. Goes right through his arms, and that's a terrific recovery right there by Price. One-handing it right there, getting it away from the Raiders. Good play by Mitchell Price, a rookie from Tulane. So the ball is on the Raider 43-yard line, first down. Down. 
Play action fake. Boomer throws. It is high. It is incomplete. Jim Riggs, the intended receiver. Jerry Robinson had the coverage. It'll be second down. That's twice now that Jim Riggs is unable to come up with a ball. That was a nice hit by Jerry Robinson, but still that's catchable. Now, we have seen Boomer for a quarter and a half. I'm surprised that, the, that, that he's rolling out as much. He is, everybody should know by now, has been bothered by the growing book. Did not practice. Told us yesterday when they worked out here. So this is my team. I will start. We've got a long way to go. Here is Brooks on the handoff, and he goes out of bounds. How is he? How does Boomer look to you as far as agility is concerned? He looks fine to me. I, I tell you, you know, there's a lot to be said for those endorphins when they kick in, man. Just ask any marathon runner or triathlete. All of a sudden, you know, your your mind goes blank and your body just goes onto a different level. I mean, he doesn't look like he's hurting at all. Once again, another good play there by Jerry Robinson, stringing the play out. Doesn't give James Brooks any running room. As you can see right there, six rushes for four yards. The Raiders are doing a good job of stuffing the run here. He's pointing, he is pointing at Boomer. False start! False start! Number seven! It may be the head bob. At Boomer, look at the look on his face. He's like, give <laughs> me a break. Take a look at Boomer Sison, though. This is what he's trying to do. He knows that both Townsend and Long do this. Take a look at his head. Is his head bobbing? Take a look. Watch what it does. Right there. Look at the flex no, of the it's, hip. It's not his head. It's his rear that started to move. the flex of his hip. I tell you what, Jim Tunney had to have bionic eyes to see that one. And that was his slow motion. Can we run that back at regular speed just to see how quickly he had to pick that up? Normal speed. You get a chance here. Watch it. Watch the buttocks. It moves yeah. back just a little <laughs> bit. I don't know about that. Uh, that's, boy. Boy, I tell you what. Whew, that's a close one. He did it. There's no question. Boy, that, that's really a borderline call, but they called it. Third down and 14. Boomer out of room. room for the first down. He's got it. He goes out of Now he's limping. Now you can see. Now you can see it bother him for the first time visually as he picks up the first down. Well, you know, and that's strange, too, because, you know, the groin injury, the problem there on that 21-yard gain is inevitably it's your cutting that you can't do. Greg Townsend cuts inside on a loop, and they push Howie inside. That eliminates contain, and Boomer Esiason has a lot of room. Right there, you can't see it. Now, let's see when he makes the cut here. Cut to the outside. Let's see when he starts to limp. Right there when he starts to slow down, put on the brakes. Putting on the brakes is obviously causing him a little bit of pain, not running straight ahead. And Boomer has come out, and Eric Wilhelm has replaced him here in this series. Oh, look at that. Boy, oh boy. Play action fake. And then a keeper on a quarterback draw to the 24-yard line. Well, Eric Wilhelm, the second-year quarterback out of Oregon State. <laughs> he wanted... He wanted to make the most of his one play, <laughs> yeah. doggone it. He says, I'm coming in there, and I'm running that sucker. Boomer, I think he was just trying to get his win. What do you think? I think you're right. I think you're right. Boomer. Interesting enough, he had to jog all the way to the other side of the field, that he had to jog back That's to the right. middle of the field just to get back in the bargain. And he can't complain about the smog today either. Oh, no. It's nah. a gorgeous day. Must be the altitude. What, a run 200 feet above here? <laughs> They tied him in motion, and here is the give to Vaughn. Maybe four yards, that's going to be about it. It'll be third down as Howie Long makes the tackle. Time remaining, first half. 550 and counting. Raiders on top by seven, 14 to seven. Where's Icky? Icky was in just for one series that we picked him up. Sam singling the three fingers up. Three fingers usually indicates the three wide outs. That's what they have in. Actually, they have four wideouts here. This is what they call, I believe, their Tiger Series. Oh, like I want to get into that argument, right? What do I know about terminology? Barber in motion to give up inside to Brooks. 
And he's going to pick up the first down to the 15-yard line. Tom Benson with the tackle. That's a great call. Inevitably, when you bring your four wide receivers out, the softest part of the defense becomes the middle because you have to spread your safeties deep and you bring four corners out away. And that only leaves five people in the box, as Warren Moon explained to us one day. The trap play to James Brooks enables them to get the first down because they don't have a middle linebacker. And the ball at the 15, first down. Cincinnati will take a lot of time. They are using the clock right now. They use it for the kickoff of the ball game. They want to take plays away from the Raiders. Play action fake. Zuma has pressure, steps away. And he throws into the end zone, and it is intercepted. Intercepted in the end zone by Terry McDaniel. And that reaction says it all. He is really angry with himself. He had a little pressure. He was flushed out, but he threw that right in a sea of people. He got away with it once earlier when he had the touchdown to McGee, but this time he pays the price for an ill-advised pass. Good job here by Scott Davis flushing him out, and you can see Bob Golick trying to get him, but right there, where is he throwing him? Eddie Anderson looks like he's going to get it, and a nice play there by Terry McDaniel. He gets his feet down for the touchback. They are close, but apparently they do stay in the end zone. We've got a timeout. Terry McDaniel with his third interception of the season, and the Raiders with the touchback have a first down at the 20-yard line. That, by the way, today, Boomer suffered two interceptions by the Raiders. Ricky Ellison got the first one on a tip ball. First time that he has ever been intercepted by the Raiders. Three previous ball games, he had no interception. Charlie, interestingly enough, that gives him 20 for the season. That is the most that he has ever had in the National Football League. That's that's going to be uh, something I wish he, he wishes he could forget now. Marcus Allen a couple of yards over the right side. It'll be second down and eight. Max Montoya, formerly with the Bengals, now the starting uh, starting guard with the Raiders. When we talked to him yesterday, he still has his restaurant. Uh, back there, and uh, the most popular dish, the Montoya plate, roasted carnitas. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, it wouldn't make much sense to have the uh, to have the Steve Wisniewski plate. With it. <laughs> when, you, when you come to Cincinnati, eat at Montoya's and bring pesos. <laughs> you know what got me is he got his tortillas from Chicago. That's right. I never figured Chicago was the tortilla capital of the United States. Marcus and Bo are in the backfield at the same time, and they are split. Marcus, the ball carrier. Was Bo the lead blocker? He w well, How did he do? <laughs> not too good. That's not his strong suit. It, it, as Art Shell says, they want these guys to run, not block. And Bo shows why he should be running, not blocking. And this will give you an opportunity to check up on uh, all the final scores in the early ball game. Here we have 3.14 and counting. Time remaining in the first half. The Raiders on top by 7. A score of 14-7. to seven. I was going to say, Charlie, that Miami victory now makes that game that much bigger come Buffalo this weekend. Definitely the game of the year in the AFC. They're down in six, right over the middle, and it is Tim Brown. Tim Brown, who has scored two touchdowns in the ballgame. Three receptions, 69 yards. This one good for 20. Well, I don't know if that necessarily atones for the drops dropped punt, but he's certainly feeling good about the way things are going his way today. Once again, it's the in route. You get a chance to see they're coming up with a blitz. Both Francis and Bussy comes in, which means single coverage by Wilcox on Timmy Brown. And as I mentioned before, Solomon Wilcox is a safety. He's not a, he's not a corner. He's not used to having people man for man. And when you see the other look at Tim Brown on our isolated look, and then take a look at the wide receivers in this shot, you can see that the Raiders have their pants above the knee. We'll talk about that. Raiders. And this pass is complete to Willie Goff. And Goff also has the silver pass above the knee. 17 yards on the play. They think it makes them faster. It doesn't, Willie tell me, it doesn't grab the knee. And we will explore that when we come back as we have the two-minute warning. And a first down at the 38. 
as we come back, another look at the uh, the game pants of the wide receivers of the speed merchants. Not just the wide receivers, Charlie. Marcus Allen wears his yep. pants that right. way, too. And believe me, it's one of those things that's psychological. I've actually seen players, and of course I did it myself, I take my shoe off and put it on that electronic scale to see how much it weighs. They really believe that the pants that way give them that little bit of edge flexibility-wise. And of course, in my case, it, it helped me go oh. from, you know, what... You know, a day to a, a half day in my 40s. We checked it with the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> also, they do get letters from the league office because they're supposed to be down over the kneecap, and they file them, and life goes on. Okay. It's a first down at the 38 yard line. Here is Marcus on the street to the right, and he is in trouble. Turns back, and he is going to lose Marcus Allen, the ball carrier. Six, maybe seven yards as he'll go back to the 44 yard line as Leon White makes the play for the Bengals. I can't get in the head of Terry Rabisky, but you know, you, you figure that a year ago at this time, Bo Jackson ran roughshod over the Cincinnati Bengals, and except for that one series where he had two or three carries, Bo Jackson has been a real non-factor in this first half. Terry Rabisky, the tight end coach, as well as the offensive coordinator for the Los Angeles Raiders, integrally involved in the play calling. is complete. A flag is down. Ethan Horton, the tight end, has it. He goes to the 20-yard line. This is going to be interesting. Either they're going to call defensive holding or they're going to call Ethan Horton for pushing off on Leon White. The call is against Cincinnati. The play went for 24 yards. As if I haven't driven you crazy by now mentioning that I played this position. Holding. Defense, number 51. Penalty is declined. It'll be first down. Inevitably, in the middle of the field, you're going to have this kind of collision between the tight end and whoever is covering him. In this case, Leon White, man for man. He grabs him at the line of scrimmage. You can see right there, there's a little bit of a hold, and he just runs a quick route right there. There's no way that he should be able to stay with him man for man. A great coverage for a tight end there. Man for man with the outside back of the tight end should win that one almost every time. First down at the 20 is Marcus Allen, shut off on the right side, and he's going to lose the yard. I've got to thought what you said about Bowie. Remember when we talked with Art Shell yesterday, and he said in the Denver game, because we only had three series in the first half, Bo did not get in the ball game till the waning seconds of the first half, and he was really upset at halftime. He said, I'm ready to run over somebody, so maybe he is not letting him play that much, so when he comes out the second half, he may be ready to run over somebody. Just a thought. We'll be back in a moment. Bo Jackson so far has rushed for 18 yards in four carries and an injury report for Cincinnati. Anthony Munoz will not return is a report that we have just received. Well, that's, that's really going to hurt them. As we mentioned, the nine-time Pro Bowler, and by many consensus, many think this man might be the greatest offensive yep. lineman to ever play the game. That's, that's going to be a, a traumatic loss for the Bengals. to Marcus as he hangs it up it is incomplete and a nice Francis with the coverage but, but, but what was wrong with the pass there was something wrong with the picture he just had to wait too long on it well he had a little bit of a rush but he throws off his back foot take a look here you'll see from the outside you'll see the rush coming here you can see Leon White cuts in there and he pressures him right here as well as Grant to throw from his back foot and float the ball a little bit. If he'd have been able to drill it, he could have had Marcus in the end zone because Marcus had him beat by two steps. But give Francis credit, he came back and made the play. Third down. Three wide receivers. Trader throws underneath the coverage and short of Horton. And it'll be fourth down. Once again, off the back foot, you know, it was almost as if there was phantom rushers there. He felt some pressure that really wasn't there. He had plenty of time to get Ethan Horton the ball, but he just, uh, he needed to step up there and deliver. And instead, he throws off his back foot, something that Joe Namath made popular, but very few people can do it because they don't have that kind of arm strength. Jeff Jager with a field goal attempt. He'll be kicking from the 29, an attempt of 39 yards. Well within his range of 50 yards. And floated a 
as if it wanted to stay out, but it just came back in. And so a 39-yard field goal will be back in a moment. Seconds left to go in the first half. This is Charlie Jones along with Todd Christensen. The Raiders leading Cincinnati by 10. In case you just joined us or in case you haven't been following the Bengals uh, this this particular week, Sam White's the head coach. Boomer Esiason with a full groin muscle has played. has been pretty effective in the first half. Stanford Jennings and Mitchell Price are the return men. As Jeff Jager will be kicking off. Boomer staying loose. A sun-drenched Southern California afternoon. And Jennings will down it in the end zone, will take the touchback, and will bring it out to the 20-yard line. Be sure to join uh, NBC Sports next Sunday for more great football action. Next Saturday, hold it. We'll start with Saturday, NFL Live, then we'll have the Raiders and the Minnesota Vikings and Ahmad Rashad. And NFL Live will visit his old hunts, the Vikings, and see what is it. It's really been a roller coaster year for Minnesota. And there's a look down at uh, lineup on Sunday. And Brooks working his way for four yards to the 24. It'll be second down and six. As Jerry Robinson there to bring James down. And Cincinnati may just settle for the countdown to the end of the first half. And the Raiders definitely have no problem with that being up by 10. I'll take one more opportunity. And here is Brooks. Finds a little bit of running room. He'll go out to the 30-yard line, which could well pick up the first down. But as he does, time will run out. Robinson again with the tackle. And it is halftime here in the Coliseum in Los Angeles with the score. The Raiders 17 and Cincinnati 7. We'll be back in just a moment. I'm tired of us centers getting no recognition. I played 13 seasons in front of millions of fans, made All-Pro twice, and started in three Super Bowls. Yet no one knows who I am. Hey, even if I'm not well-known, at least my beer is. Miller Lite. An All-Pro center doesn't want some watered-down version of a regular beer. I want the less filling beer that tastes great. Oh, 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 let me get that. Hey, aren't you Randy Cross? It's well known. When it's Miller Lite, less filling tastes great. Welcome back to the Coliseum in Los Angeles as we come to the end of halftime. Raiders leading by 10. I'm Charlie Jones along with Todd Christensen. An interesting comparison the first half. First, the quarterback of the Cincinnati Bengals, Boomer Esiason. Well, we were talking so much about his health, Charlie, that that was the big issue as to whether or not he could go. Obviously, that's not a factor anymore. He's fine. But he's had two crucial interceptions that have really hurt him. Now that does take the quarterback situation of, uh, of the Raiders. Well, Jay you know, Schrader. I don't get it because every time you and I do a game, Jay Schrader plays terrific. He's I live all here pro. in Los Angeles and I hear how crummy he's doing and then you and I do a game. All of a sudden he's got two touchdowns, 160 plus yards. I mean, he's playing great. No wonder he was smiling at us yesterday. At practice. <laughs> hey, Jones and Christensen, I'm going to have a great game. Yeah. <laughs> but he is. And we expected, though, the Raiders to run the ball, just to run right at the Bengals. And Sam White also told us that's what they expected. I would anticipate that the first series that the Raiders get offensive that you're going to see Bo Jackson. Mm -hmm. right. Let's look at the comparison of the two quarterbacks, give you an idea of what has taken place here in the first half. Well, early on, you can see the numbers that, that, that Esaias has started out well with the big touchdown to McGee, but since that time, you see the two interceptions. On the other side, you see Jay Schrader, 8 for 15, 156 yards and two touchdowns to Tim Brown, having a very effective game passing the football. Stanford Jennings and Mitchell Price are the deep backs. Jeff Jager will be kicking off for the Raiders, and the second half is underway. Jennings on the return, and he is 
out across the 40-yard line to the 42-yard line. So Cincinnati will start with excellent field position following that 32-yard kickoff return. You know, Charlie, Stanford Jennings does not play that much for the Cincinnati Bengals, but I think he has definitely prolonged his career with that 90-yard touchdown return he had in Super Bowl 23 against the San Francisco 49ers. And believe me, there's nothing like starting out on the 42-yard line as opposed to the 22 or the 12. Cincinnati trailing by ten, having their opportunities in the first half, were not able to capitalize on them. Here's the rookie, Harold Green. And again, Icky Woods bothered by that rib problem. We saw him briefly in the first half, not seen a lot of him. Greg Townsend with the tackle. Here's a look at Icky. Well, that explains why yesterday he was off by himself. I think he's a little disgruntled by the fact that he knew his playing time was going to be limited. And believe me, rib injuries are not pleasant. Coughing, breathing, everything is. Second and short. And Harold Green again gets a call. He'll be shy of the first down. He's going to be third down in just about one. Well, Sam Weiss told us that Harold Green would be limited in his playing time, but you know, he's been fairly effective in his running. He's a good, hard runner, terrific speed, but again, this might be the most difficult offense in the National Football League to learn because of the complexity of it, because of Sam Weiss and the multiple sets and formations that he puts in week in and week out. And also the names. The names are constantly changing. Exactly. And here's James Brooks. Tip the tackle at the 50, he's to the 49, and is going to come up short of the first down. Good defensive play, particularly by Ricky Ellison. I don't understand that. You know, when you have a short yardage situation, why do you go misdirection, and why do you go wide when that gives pursuit a chance? Take a look here. You're going to see he's going wide, falling behind the blocker, but the pursuit comes up. Harden does a good job there. He does slip the one tackle, but the pursuit finally catches him there in the form of Eddie Anderson and Ricky Ellison. And from this vantage point, of course, I always guess wrong, but I guess it looks to me like they're a little bit short. I think they are, too. Yeah. I got one! Hey, <laughs> length of the football in a little more. But they're going to go for it. You can see right there, Sam Weiss says, we feel like we have to. One of the points he made to us yesterday is he says the speed factor and the size factor is not in our favor. So if we're to win, we have to take some chances and be a little bit deceptive. And part of taking chances is right here, four down territory inside their 50-yard line. He said a complete speed mismatch. And the Raiders do have a lot of speed. We'll point that out to you in a moment. Fourth down and a foot. Now, Charlie, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not Esaias decides, decides to bob his head or whatever to draw some people off sides because he got caught last time. Esaias then a quarterback sneak, and this also is going to be close. And I was thinking the one thing that the Raiders do not have to worry about would be the quarterback sneak because, again, that puts more and more pressure on the groin pull. And Cincinnati has two very difficult games remaining, particularly next week with Houston. Well, as O.J. Simpson said in NFL Live, they're all important at yes. this point. You can't necessarily gauge and say, okay, well, this one is a little less important. We're going to have the, you know, I mean, you got to go all out. And, you know, this is why they pay these guys these seven-figure salaries. You have to go out there when you're in a little bit of pain. And I know that sounds cliche. But let's face it, the Cincinnati Bengals are very dependent upon the success and prowess of one Boomer Esiason. And it's the first down by half the length of the football. By the way, congratulations to you on a statement that was made yesterday by George Anderson, the trainer of the Raiders, when I was talking to him. He said one thing about Todd, he was a trainer's delight. Said, you always played hurt. You never complained about that. Well, of course, that's, that's part of the old axiom, right? No brain, no pain. <laughs> Interesting, George also said that. <laughs> oh, oh, sure, now you have to mention it. Oh, yeah. Well, well, <laughs> First down, Cincinnati. Play action fake. Incomplete. Just off of the fingertips. Eddie Anderson was there in plenty of time to make the play, and he just, and he guesses wrong. Was, Tim McGee, Tim McGee. I was talking with Eddie Anderson yesterday about the fact that, you know, he wants to, he wants to elevate himself. He wants to be in that Ronnie Lott, Joey Browner category. Look at that right there. 
A safety cannot wait. He has to attack the ball. He doesn't get the luxury of sitting there like the receiver waiting for the ball to come to him because right there, McGee actually cuts in front of him. And if he can hold on, there's no free safety left. He's going to go the distance. And both Eddie Brown and Tim McGee, when he talks, they like the Coliseum. They like this grass. It's going to prolong your career, although I have noticed today there have been a few people slipping. Second and ten. Brooks is in motion. He becomes the lead blocker. As Eric Carr carries, and he goes to the 45. Has three. It'll be third down and seven as we check the Hertz 10-minute ticker. And as we check the ticker, we have the pushing and shoving match going on. Eddie Brown and Terry McDaniel are getting into it. Really, Eddie Brown has been kind of silent today. Going into this game, he was the leading receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals, but with only 39 catches. And a lot of this might be the frustration coming out on the part of Eddie Brown that he's not, he has been somewhat of a non-factor today, although he does have nine touchdown receptions. Interesting, Eddie Brown was one of three very terrific receivers drafted in 1985. He was drafted ahead of, get this, ahead of Jerry Rice. And I remember Bill Walsh saying that he would have given up his first three picks that year to get Eddie Brown. So he goes to Mississippi Valley State and says, well, we'll take a chance on this Rice guy. He might turn out to be pretty good. Also in that draft was Al Toon of the New York Jets. That's an interesting triumvirate of young receivers, and all three have made their mark in the National Football League. So now we settle back down. Cincinnati, they wanted to get a playoff. They wanted to run while the Raiders were making a couple of substitutions. Let's go with the same personnel. Settle down. Now, it's interesting. Boomer just counted the defensive backs and looked over to Sam Weish and counted and looked and he held up five fingers. But in reality, there are six. Third down and seven. Six DBs. Boomer, five of 12. Only one of his last six. Pressure, steps away, sets, throws, diving reception is going to be incomplete out of bounds. And it was Tim McGee. Now, we promised you, and we deliver the Hurts 10-minute ticker. Houston over Kansas City. Pittsburgh wins. Miami down Seattle. Tampa Bay wins. Dallas wins over Phoenix. The Colts over the Jets, and Cleveland over Atlanta. Halftime, Philadelphia by 17. Denver... Trailing 3-0, now in the third lead, 7-3. Lee Johnson will be kicking to Tim Brown. San Diego's still pretty much in the playoff race, Joe. Not that good a kick. Gets a good bounce, a good roll. It will go to the five, and it's going to be down at the five-yard line. And so the Raiders will take over following that 40-yard kick and roll. We'll be back in a moment. This is Charlie Jones and Todd Christensen. We this is Charlie Jones and Todd Christensen. We are back with 11.09 to go in the third. Raiders on offense for the first time in the second half. And as promised, Bo Jackson is the running back. Interesting, Marcus Allen started out and Bo went out and kind of grabbed him and said, no, no, fine, fine. That was interesting. I mean, it, it's habit for Marcus. He just assumes he's starting, and there it is. In the exact same position where he went the distance last time for 92 yards. It's time to come out throwing. And the pass is complete to Willie Galt. Then they'll have to touch him down. Which they will. And again, I'm surprised because they have been so effective running. You figure that they're going to... And Cincinnati's had a problem stopping the run, and yet they continue to throw. Well, you know what? I need to make a point here about Willie Galt. Right there with that catch, Willie Galt now has 47 catches for 837 yards, both career highs. And I know that when they give up a first-round pick for Willie Galt a couple of years ago, the question was asked as to whether or not this guy was really, really justifying the pick because he really struggled when he got here. But now he has actually turned into a go-to receiver for the Raiders. And here is Bo Jackson. He reverses, comes back, gets a block. Raider lays a block, misses his man. Bo Jackson breaks, clean at the 30. He's to the 50. He's to the 30. He's to the 20. And he slides. No, they're going to mark it down. Just shy. Just shy. And he was caught. And I think even Bo is surprised. Rod Jones caught him. 88 yards. He is going to be the infamous Rod Jones. He will be the one that they want to tell his kids and his grandkids, I caught Bo Jackson from behind. 
What a run. Take a look at Jay Schrader right here actually helping out. Jay Schrader throws a little bit of a block right there on Jones. Now watch, Jones is in the trail position the entire way. He's stumbling right there, but now, now Bo has it. He's at full speed. He comes back to the inside. He's starting to fade now. You can see the big bear is getting on his back. He's getting tired. Right there, Jones gets it just before he gets into the end zone. He can't believe it. Look at that looking back right there. When you're running upright like that, as he is, as opposed to with the forward lane, you know he's getting tired. Rod Jones forever is going to be able to brag to all his friends, I'm the man that caught Bo Jackson from behind. And Bo's looking around and who got me? Who got me? <laughs> the big bear is on his back? The big bear is on his back. That's a track phrase. You should know that. I know. I love it, though. Nice hurdle right there, taking a page out of Willie Galt's book, a former high hurdler. Now, right there, he's in full stride. He's at top speed. Now, watch as he starts to get more erect. Look at him start to labor. Look at his arms starting to go. He's starting to fade. The headlong dive. Take a look at Jones. I did it. Look at Bo. I can't believe it. How did he do that? In fairness to Bo Jackson, look at this. Oh, my goodness. It took it all, but he got him. Deja vu. Just about a year ago here. Same end of the field. Bo went, what, 92 yards in? And <laughs> look at that. He can't believe it either. How did I get caught? Look at him smile. Nice average per carry, yeah. huh? <laughs> Should mention that the Raiders are 6-1 and one when Bo Jackson goes over 100 yards. This is his third straight 100-yard game. Take a look at this. The December to remember indeed. Bo Jackson had been accused going into this season of the fact that he faded near the end of the season, but he's doing anything but that here in the 12th month of the year. And here is Bo for the touchdown, and he's knocked away. Charlie, I noticed that Marcus Allen was in there, and Bo told him to go out. He said, I'm the one that went the yardage. I want the touchdown. <laughs> It'll be second down and goal to go. Now, did you say it was 88 yards? Yes. So if he had gone in for the touchdown, it still would not have been a 90-plus run for his third in his career. Oh, okay. So he's going to have to settle for the pick that's going to be the Game's not over. Okay. <laughs> Good point. Play action fake. Jared throws it. It is there to Ethan Horton. I think Schrader could have gone. As soon as the fake the ball, everybody went through. Hey, he's a quarterback. There's no way he wants to run in there. He wants to pad his touchdown pass stats. Of course he's going to go to Ethan Horton. Terrific fake. And Jason, take a look. At, I mean, Horton isn't even touched. Everybody knows the ball's going to get the ball. There's Jason Buck who's supposed to have him in coverage. But he's a defensive end. There's no way he's going to cover Ethan Horton. Third touchdown pass for Jay Schrader today. And you know what? In the books, it looks like a 60-yarder. It's a touchdown pass. And for Ethan Horton, his second touchdown of the year. The extra point is there. And the reaction of Jay Schrader as the Raiders go up 24-7. to He's going to run over and say, hey, thanks, Bo. You got us here. Now, Richard Wood in Mobile. <laughs> Richard. Is, he is the agent, <laughs> lawyer, manager, man of all seasons for both. And are they on the phone? Are they working another deal That's already? Right. He says, I want to renegotiate right now. <laughs> yeah. He says, no way, babe. You got caught from behind by this youngster <laughs> right there. That's right. I want to say this right now, and I know you're going to say this is using your excuse. Bo Jackson had to carry the football. The other guy could run and pump his arms freely. I know that that's an excuse, but it's true. Now, if it was Bo Jackson, that's not supposed to count. Yeah, I know. You're absolutely right. He is superhuman. Still, you can see that he has a big smile on his face, and he doesn't care. Fourth longest run in Raider history. And three of the four are held by Bo Jackson. The other is held by... Clint Daniels. Kenny King. Kenny King. I was there for that one. San Diego, 89 yards. I'll never forget that. And here is Stanford Jennings on the return, and he has wrestled down. Elvis Patterson makes the tackle. I'm going to take right here. You get a chance to see that Ethan Horton, over him is Jason Buck, who is normally a defensive end. He has to have him in coverage. But everybody right here is looking at this guy. And so when Bo Jackson goes in in the play action phase, there's absolutely nobody off to the left. Nice little bootleg move here by Schrader. Ethan Horton completely alone. Easy money touchdown. And Charlie's right. Certainly he could have walked in, but 
don't tell me that those quarterbacks don't want those <laughs> statistics. They do. Brooks to the 24, gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. Bob Golick with the tackle. About an hour before the ball game, I made a phone call to Paul Brown of the Cincinnati Bengals, and I know that his friends all across the country concerned this week when he had that a leg problem with a blood clot. He's fine. Uh, so the 48 hours were a little kind of dicey, but they dissolved the clot, and he's up and about and having fun. Has been to uh, the office a few times, out doing some Christmas shopping, some decorations today, and watching the ball game. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. 82 years young. Oh, yeah. And what a contribution this man has made to the National Football League. Pass for our side is complete to Tim McGee, and he is bumped out of bounds by Terry McDaniel. Also talked to his wife, Mary. we we'll a Merry Christmas, and we'll see him in La Jolla as soon as the season is over. Right now, then, let's check the Hertz 10-minute ticker. And we may not get it in. When you, follow, when you cover Cincinnati, then you look out for quick replays and to get the tickers in whenever you can. And so we'll wait to play. Now the officials call timeout. I wonder why. Well, he reset the. He came in and he reset the football, or remarked the football. And Jim Tunney, the referee. You read lips. Is he chewing gum or is he saying something? Uh, something about his Domino's order. I, I don't know. <laughs> and, and while we're working that, here is the Hertz current 10-minute ticker. Philadelphia by Denver now stepping away from San Diego. Saw Denver last week. They did look good against Kansas City, although they did lose. San Diego feeling if they won the last three that they could still make the playoff. And meanwhile, we wait. Brain trust of the Raiders there. And Sam White says, I don't know what's happening either. Fun review of the play stands as called first down. And we're reviewing the play. Tim McGee right here, close to the sidelines. You can see one, two, left, right. Easy money. And it is a first down. And Boomer, Boomer out the wide receiver. <laughs> and it is almost intercepted. Let's take another look at that. Now, what do you guess the Boomer's going to come back to the huddle and say what receivers have said to him countlessly throughout his career? I was open. I was open. I was open. Oh, yes. <laughs> Boomers to the far right of your screen. You see coming out again, I guess they're going to go with the option pass. But, of course, the cornerbacks aren't fooled. And look at this. This is what safeties and everybody dream of. Look at that pop-up. Both McDaniel and Anderson are thinking, boy, I'm going to get some cheap stats here. But they weren't able to come down the interception. Then James, the rookie receiver from Arizona State on the throwing end. Now Brooks moves over. Pass is complete to Brooks, and he's got the first down at the later 46-yard line where Eddie Anderson makes the tackle. Earlier in the game, I had mentioned the fact that they were trying to isolate James Brooks on a linebacker, but there the Raiders were in a zone defense. And Brooks does a good job of finally finding the seam there in the middle. 21-yard game. We're just past the midway mark in the third quarter. And Brooks' his first reception of the ball game. McGee comes down out of bounds, so it'll be second down and ten. Now for an update, let's go to New York and Bob Costas. Bob? Charlie, the Broncos are the first team ever to lose as many as 10 games in a season following a Super Bowl appearance. But is this the day the losing streak ends? Michael Young makes the catch. The flag was on the Chargers. Touchdown counts. 14-3. Does Rich Goins get off the billboard? Yeah, baby! Perhaps. Back to you, Charlie. <laughs> the whole world is anticipating the return of Rich Goins to Mother Earth. And right now, it is Eric Ball, and he has returned to Mother Earth by Scott Davis. It's something tells me that the novelty of what is occurring to Rich Goins, I think there are a lot of sadistic people out there going, go Chargers, I want to see that guy stay up there for an entire offseason. 
Michael Young with the reception. He had an excellent touchdown reception against Kansas City. He's become, in the last three weeks, the hot receiver for John Elway. Well, they've needed a lot of help there. They've had some injury factor, and I think that Elway needs some more go-to people. He hasn't had this year the guy that he can really count on consistently. Third and nine. Boomer over the head of James Brooks. Oh, I bet he wishes he had that oh, one. Oh, yes. James Brooks wide open in the flat. Plenty of running room. Now, one of the problems, let me quickly get this in. One of the problems that Boomer may be having, when you look at the field and you look the way the shadows are, an absolutely clear day, when he throws to this side, he's coming up, he's looking into the sun. Normally, I'd say that's an excuse, but you're absolutely right. It is difficult. And especially as a left-hander throwing across his body to the right side of the field. And although James Brooks is multi-talented, at five foot nine, he's not the ideal downfield receiver to see. Lee Johnson to kick, Tim Brown the return man. Ball to fake. Of course. They snapped it directly to Stanford Jennings, Charlie, and the Raiders absolutely were not fooled. Good job by special teams coach Steve Ortmeyer preparing his team. What they are in is what is called a safe. Well, you can see the snap right there to Jennings in the middle. And look at that. Absolutely nobody is fooled. Good job there by both Wallace and Dan Land in stuffing the play. And Ricky Hundley and Patterson make the tackle. Raider ball when we be... No one can see you now. Hey, bet we... 6-12. Time remaining. And uh, let's check the all-time receiver list for the Raiders. As, as Marcus Allen was on the scoreboard for everybody to see. Marcus Allen has moved into fourth. Just behind... My broadcast partner, Todd Christensen. Just behind 59 catches. What's just behind? Well, I'm trying to help you all that I can. Hey, I'm just grateful they spelled the last name right, okay? That's all I care about. They spelled the name right. My mom's happy. It is incomplete. When we were talking with Art Shell yesterday, he told us a basketball story about you. You were playing where up in Auburn, California, in the off-season basketball game, and you scored 39 points. And Nobody knows it, and Shell is out there as the point guard? <laughs> the ball handler? Absolutely the largest point guard I've ever seen. Six foot five and a half, and at that time, even though he would admit it, 300 plus, he played at about 308, 310. Yeah, he was some kind of point guard. <laughs> Let me tell you something. In my entire time ever playing basketball with him, I never saw a single person draw the charge. <laughs> and here is Marcus after the 50 yard line. So it'll be third down and five. And also, he pointed out that after the game, you, you saw, scored all these points that nobody, nobody knew that I was even there. They weren't paying any attention. And he said, Todd. He says, Todd, you have to learn the art of diplomacy. They're not hit coming here to see you score points. And of course, at the time, I was a third string tight end that nobody had ever heard of. And I thought, that was my way to make a mark. I hope I could score a lot of points against the local fire department. Yeah. Third down and five. Does this mean Bo's tired that they brought Marcus back in for this series? I mean, he's had a whole five carries. Well, he's got his 100 yards. Oh, good point. All right. Incomplete. And it will be fourth down. Barton, the intended receiver. Charlie, the Raiders have to be careful here. There's a penalty at holding, and I'm sure that the Bengals are going to decline. <clears throat> The Raiders have to be careful here that, uh, you know, they just don't take it for granted. Obviously, that was a play of desperation there for the Bengals to go for it on fourth down. But instead of taking advantage of the field position now, the Raiders quickly go three plays and out. They get a chance to see if they're putting the ice on Boomer, which that indicates was, that he's not coming back. That in. would seem to indicate that we are going to see Eric yeah. Wilhelm, yeah. yeah. Either, the, either that or that's a uniform affectation that you and I are not familiar with, and I don't think that's what it is. Jeff Gossett will be kicking. Mitchell Price is the return man. We're moving on the five-minute mark, time remaining in the third quarter. And it goes out of bounds around the 22 or the 23-yard line. 27 yards on the kick. When we come back, number four, Eric Wilhelm will be the quarterback for the Bengals. Yeah, golf. Football. Golf. Golf. No. Football. Let's watch both. Miller Lite presents Full Contact Golf. Yeah! We're still on the first hole, Bob, and this is Davis teeing it up. Here's the drive. It has blocked! Brought to you by Miller Lite. If you can combine great taste and less filling, you can combine anything. Oh, he's got daylight going for the green. Here's the putt. There's the blitz. Oh, oh. 
Good beer. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? Boomer Esiason is out of the ball game. Has ice now taped onto that groin pole that he's been uh, suffering this past week. Eric Wilhelm is in. Wilhelm has never started an NFL game. Last year here against the Raiders, he came in when Boomer Sison had that bruised lung. He completed 15 to 36 for 200 yards. Looked pretty good, but uh, the Raiders went on to handily defeat the Bengals last year. I thought it was interesting, too, to follow up on that story that when he came in, Howie Long looked across from the yes. line at him and said, Oh, what, they're bringing in the paper boy? <laughs> yes. And Eric Wilcom responded by saying, Hey, go eat some more Campbell's Chunky Soup, buddy. Is that it? Yeah, he did. Really? Wow. A lot of tough talk across the line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, they will run the they will run the exact same offense with Wilhelm as they run with the science, and there'll be no changes. They do not make any changes. Breaks clean for the first down. Crosses the 40 out to the 43-yard line. And now for an update, let's go to New York and Bob Costas, Bob. Charlie, here's the play you talked about. 92 yards last year. Actually, about 13 months ago, November of 1989, same field, same two teams, only this time he never changed direction. He just turned the corner and blazed down the sidelines, 92 yards for a touchdown. Today, 88 yards, actually in many ways a better run, but no TD as they stopped them at the one. And it was Rod Jones who stopped him at the one, and he caught him. And here is Brooks, a straight shot up the middle. And he goes to the 47-yard line. Before, before Bob Costas gets through, I, and because I, I know that they're listening into the game in New York, Todd brought up, while we were away in commercial, a question we do not have the answer here, so you always hate to propose a question. You do have an answer? Yeah, I think I do now. Well, wait a minute. Let's propose the question, and if you got an answer, let's wait and let everybody share in it. Numbers of players, what other quarterback in the National Football League has worn number four, a quarterback that has worn number four? to the 49 of course if you are a chicago bear fan then you have an uh, have an answer immediately uh, we're sorry about that about harbaugh of course and then uh it was it steve fuller did he also is that right that was and right also now. wore that yeah. with the chicago bears yes so it wasn't as good a question as we once thought that it was steve walsh for new orleans for new orleans Boy, we, we, is there no end to answers? That was a, Boy, I tell you what, our crack staff, they cannot be stopped. That's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry we even brought it up. Okay, well, what about three and a half, you guys? Let's see you get that one, huh? Third down. Eric Ball played his collegiate ball at UCLA. Ricky Ellison makes the tackle, and of course you would say UCLA, naturally Eric Ball has played here, but the only time he would have played in the Coliseum was when they played a USC. Isn't that hard to believe after all those years? You just assumed that SC-UCLA meant the LA Coliseum. Yes. Oh, yes. I mean, yes. now it means Pasadena, which is strange. It's fourth down, but uh, as witnessed by the last two times when they both went for it and then went on a fake punch, you'd have to think that Cincinnati is going for it here, and they are. 140 and counting, time remaining as we take a quick look at the 10-minute ticket. We're in the third quarter. First time we've seen Cincinnati in their three tight end offense. Play action fake. The pass is complete right at the first down. Good continuing effort by Eric Caddis. And he leaned for the first down. Nobody was with Eddie Brown when he went in motion. That could have been interesting if he'd have taken a chance up top. Eddie Brown went in motion, and, and, and they expected Eddie Anderson to come completely across the field and cover him. But Wilhelm went with a safe pass, and Harden actually makes an al almost prevents him. But as you mentioned, Caddis with the big body stretches forward to get the first down for the Bengals. The ball at the Raider 46-yard line. One minute, time remaining in the third. and he will go to the 44, so he's got a couple. 
And it is second down and eight as Jerry Robinson is there to bring him down. I think this would be a good time for the Cincinnati Bengals to give Wilhelm some confidence here. Give him a chance to throw the ball. Once again, another injured on the injured player, Bruce Reimers, I believe it is, is yep. down. They've been very unlucky with their offensive linemen today, haven't they? Really have. Bengal was injured on the play. Next Saturday, it's a special afternoon of great NFL action beginning at 3.30 Eastern time with NFL Live, Bob Costas, Will McDonough, O.J. Simpson take you in and around the NFL. Plus, former Viking great Ahmad Rashad goes back to his old stomping grounds and he will examine the Minnesota Vikings roller coaster season. And then it's game time. The Raiders travel to the Metrodome to face the rejuvenated Minnesota Vikings, although the Vikings had to, they weren't so rejuvenated today, were they? No. Todd said, no, not today. And then on Sunday, this is the lineup of NFL Live. Miami Buffalo, Houston, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, New England, the Jets, Kansas City, San Diego, Houston, Cincinnati. Uh, it's all going to come down in reality. We thought it would be the last three weeks, and now that that will go by the boards today, it'll be the last two weeks. Cincinnati will host Houston and Cleveland. And the Raiders at Minnesota, then hosting San Diego. And uh, the standings in the AFC Central look like this. And that is current. And so the way things are going right now, it looks as if Houston and Pittsburgh will be tied for the lead after today. Interest, interesting fodder for the press will be the, the fact that earlier in the season, you know, we had this big thing about the Cincinnati Reds and the baseball and how they had to switch. That originally this game, this upcoming game here on the 23rd was supposed to be in the Astrodome. Yeah. And of course they made accommodations. I was told by the public relations people there at Houston that they said they're more than willing to keep it because they could still do it. But they claimed that the Cincinnati people said no, that they had to change it. Now that's turned out to be a really pivotal decision here down the stretch. Howie Long just reaches out with that left hand and pulls it down. Smart football by Howie Long. Didn't take himself out of position, did a good job of doing what he's supposed to do, keep contained, and he makes the big play for the Raiders. That is the end of the third quarter, and we'll be back after these messages from your local station. They're to wear it that way. <laughs> I think I would have liked it. Yeah, it's not just a matter of the fact that this is a good-looking guy. He's playing, too, as you mentioned earlier. Eight sacks on the season, playing some good football, Scott Davis. Wilhelm throws passes complete to Lynn James. Tom Benson with the tackle at the 45-yard line. But it's not going to be enough, and it'll be fourth down. Once again, Howie Long in the backfield chasing down Eric Wilhelm, forcing him to throw short. He needed more yardage than that. Secondary, the Raiders doing a good job playing conservatively, not giving up the big play. Dennis Munition does it again in the third quarter. Cincinnati had the ball for 11 minutes and 46 seconds, and the Raiders scored the only touchdown. Well, that 88-yard dash took how long? 10, 11 seconds? Johnson kicking to Tim Brown. And it will go into the end zone for the automatic touchback. And we'll bring it out to the 20 yard line. Tonight on NBC, Ferris Bueller followed by Saved by the Bell. And NBC presents the blockbuster movie that started it off Back to the Future, starring Michael J. Fox in a special episode of the NBC hit comedy Parenthood, starring Ed Begley Jr. That's all tonight here on NBC. That's a fun show. Raiders go to work at their own 20-yard line. 24-7. And right now, in the West, it looks as if the Raiders will be on top with a 10-4 record. Kansas City will drop to a 9-5. Seattle to a 7-7. Right now, San Diego is losing. They'll be 6-8. Denver will be 4-10. It's just a prognostication of what may happen after this game is over. And here is Bo Jackson to the outside. And he is brought down. Rod Jones, his nemesis again. Jones, I've got your number 34. You're mine. Exactly right. 
Boy, oh boy. Rod Jones has got to say to himself, yeah, maybe we're behind, and, but boy, I'm going to have something to tell my kids and grandkids. Nice stiff arm there on Francis, cutting to the outside, and now Bo has to question his speed a little bit here. He's saying to himself, man, I don't think anybody could ever catch me. Now this Rod Jones character, man, he owns me. What's the deal? Well, it's, just, it's all in the name. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, rods are fast guys, all right. That's right. <laughs> and it's second down. And uh, stepping and making contact was David Grant. I would definitely call this offense for the Los Angeles Raiders. Encroachment, 98, defense. Encroachment is moving across the neutral zone and making contact prior to the snap of the ball. And it'll be a first down. They're definitely in what I would call a running mode. Get a chance to look, you'll see definitely nobody move there. Left no. tackle now replacing Rory Graves is Bruce Wilkerson, who was slated at the beginning of the season to be the starter at right tackle. But Steve Wright, the right tackle for the Los Angeles Raiders, has played so effectively, shutting out such people like Richard Dent and Bruce Smith, but they can't get him out. So now it's a chance to give Bruce Wilkerson some playing time, as well as now right guard, Todd Peake, number 64. And here is Bo, a straight shot up the middle, and he is met by David Fulcher. David Fulcher on the tackle. Santa Claus is a Raider. Raider Claus? You know him? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do, as a matter of fact. The guy stiffed me last Christmas. Raider Claus. <laughs> well, you weren't a good little boy. I guess so. <laughs> hey. Rudolph, everybody is here. I tell you what. She does have a very shiny nose. Look at that. <laughs> Football have been better, better good to me. Second down. And Steve Smith, the lead blocker, is Bo Jackson. And so we can update the numbers on Bo Jackson, his average per carry, because they just dropped. He was averaging over 16 yards a carry in this ballgame. But that short yardage he had was going to drop him down just a little. We'll have that number for you officially. It's still an awesome number. There it is. Well, if you count the fact that in the Miami game, he had, I believe, 17 carries for 99 yards. You know, that's pretty close to a 100-yard game. But now that's three straight 100-yard games. 14 and a half yards per carry. Yes. Wow. It certainly helps to have that one that went for 88, though, doesn't it? That does help you out. Third down and three. And here is Marcus Allen after the 43-yard line, and he will pick up the first down. And for the second time in the ballgame, we've had a little pushing and shoving contest. 11-13, time remaining in the fourth quarter. The Raiders up 24-7. And I imagine the Raiders here will just work on the clock. So, sometime after that 88-yard run and that fake punt which went awry, the energy of the game has dissipated somewhat. But give credit to the Raiders here in taking the time off the clock. Right here they want to show how physical they are. They have their two tight ends set. They have their big people in. That's exactly what they're trying to do, is they're trying to run. You can see Jay Schrader right there looking at the play clock, letting it run down, and do whatever they can to take it off the clock right there. And again, he has that problem looking right into the sun. You can tell from the shadow. And here's Marcus Allen. To the 46-yard line. It'll be second down and seven, an opportunity to take a look at all of the games today. Houston with that big victory over Kansas City in Kansas City. Pittsburgh, they stay in the race. Miami, of course, they're right amongst them, and uh, they'll be going against Buffalo next week. Boy, what a ball game that. Boy, I hope Kelly is all right. I hope that he is all right in the playoffs to go ahead and finish in it to... Uh, he is such a great quarterback. He's having such a super year. They he need him. He seemed to indicate the fact that, uh, you know, that if they can get the bye, if they can yeah. win next Sunday, yeah. that he says that he'll be back because that'll give him that extra week. He can make. He feels he can make the playoffs if they don't. If they're not in the wild card, then he have to miss the wild card game. Maybe. My experience is with a sprained medial collateral ligament, which is what they say he has. If it is not a grade three sprain, which means to be operated on, but then four weeks would indeed be plenty of time for him to get healthy. That is. The Steve Smith with that last carry to the 50. That is enough time. 
And now, of course, I think the recovery time has been, is, you know, the, the things that they do in sports medicine now are so far advanced than what they were doing, you know, 15 and 20 years ago. It's hard to realize that they can compress time like that, but in reality, they can. I thought it interesting, too, that in the, in the un very unofficial poll that Wick Will McDonough had at the top of the show on NFL Live, that they went to the 14 head coaches. Eight of them said that the league's MVP, at least the AFC, should indeed be Jim Kelly, which says a lot about what he's, what he's been doing for that organization. For the Raiders, a balanced attack. 163 yards rushing, 163 yards passing. With just over nine minutes to go in the ballgame. And here is Marcus Allen. And he goes to the 41-yard line and he has the first down. You know, Bruce Wilkerson hasn't played for a while. <laughs> and sure enough, he's getting, he's getting into it out there with Bernard Clark, the rookie middle linebacker who you might recall from his Orange Bowl success days there down there in Miami. I can't say enough about Steve Smith. You know, we, we addressed him earlier. He threw the key block enabling Marcus Allen to get downfield. But to be able to do that time in and time out. <laughs> you can see, look at that. Oh, gosh. The, taking a big, deep breath. Man, all these guys get all these yards, all this attention. All the reruns. They go to the banquets. <laughs> they get the commercials. <laughs> I get the headaches. Believe me, a player like that around the league, you see people like that. Tim, you know, Earl Campbell would not have been as good without a Tim Wilson. Certainly you can say that Walter Payton would give credit to people like Roland Harper, Matt Sui, people that are in front of him right now. Maurice Carthen, who does an outstanding job for the New York Giants in that capacity, and certainly here for the Los Angeles Raiders, a gentleman by the name of Frank Hawkins was very effective in that role, as now Steve Smith is. Now, you saw during that momentary timeout that the referee, Jim Tunney, what he, he's stepping into both huddles, he was settling everybody down, does not want to let this ball game get away in any way, shape, or form, and so he's just kind of reorganizing everybody, passing the words, and then we'll get back to playing football. And here's the man we were talking about. Steve Smith, so he has an opportunity, at least in this ball game for a while now, to pick up some yardage. And Marcus Allen threw a pretty good block out there on Leon White, enabling him to get some yardage. That is the time remaining. Let's take a look at the AFC East standing. And there they are, Buffalo 12-2, Miami 11-3, followed by Indianapolis Jets and New England. And of course, Buffalo and Miami, the big one, next weekend here on NBC and it'll all start on Sunday with NFL Live at 12.30 Eastern Time but that's the big one Miami, but Houston Cincinnati is also big you know as we come down to the wire a lot of really good ball games and whistle sound flags come down Steve Smith is the ball carrier of course we like to think that the Kansas City San Diego game is very big and it is. Ball start. Really is. 68 offense. It's still second down. If San Diego can come back on Denver and if somehow, uh, you know, be seven and seven, they would still be in the playoff hunt. And Kansas City still, you know, they're going to be now they will now be chasing the Raiders if Los Angeles goes on to win here. They definitely have a yeah. tough road to hoe. We'll have yeah. to win in San Diego and then they end their season in Chicago. Chicago. It's yes. tough. Yes, it is. This is only the second penalty against Los Angeles. Steve Smith, by the way, rushing. Number 35 for the Raiders. Five carries, 20 yards. You saw it just earlier. You saw Marcus Allen screaming at the sidelines. It's very important here when you establish this kind of veteran leadership to not lose your composure in a situation like this where you feel like you have the game well in hand. Marcus Allen talked about what he calls the killer instinct. And he comes slipping down. And right now, let's go to NFL Live in New York and Bob Costas. Well, Charlie, decent men and women everywhere hope that Rich Goins can get down off that billboard, either for humanitarian reasons or simply because they don't want to see him again next week on NFL yeah, Live. Call, call David Treadwell later. chips in, kicks I, I the field know, like goal. Minutes, Rich indicates that it's good. Denver leads 17-3. Charlie? Thank you, Bob. And Den Denver played, as I mentioned this earlier, against Kansas City. They really played well last week. Elway had a great ball game. And he's been taking so much abuse in Denver. Nice to see them finish on an up note the last few games and, the, and get their fans back. Well, one thing I'd have to say about the Broncos, they, first of all, they've been very really unlucky, but they definitely have not quit. They've come to play every week, and they've been competitive. 
five yards. Layup game down. called against the Raiders. They really have been. They have stayed in there. And that's hard to do when you have those long losing streaks, isn't it? Yeah, especially when you hit, say, the middle of November and you know you're out of it. It's tough to motivate yourself week in and week out. But give Dan Reeves credit. He has fielded as a competitive team, albeit not as confident as it was last year when it made it to the Super Bowl. It'll be third down. And around 13 or 14 to go for the first down. The Raiders have run off eight minutes on the clock on this drive. It's pressure from the backside. Interesting. Now, he was throwing the ball away. He was avoiding the loss. But he threw it to a side. Now, that call is only by Jim Tunney. And where Tunney was, Schrader was behind him. And he could not look back over his shoulder and see him. So it was the positioning of Jim Tunney that he, that way he got away with it. Clearly, there's no doubt that he did. That was intentional grounding. Marcus isn't even looking around right there. He's just throwing that away. Throwing that, yeah. He's not interested in completing that pass. Marcus hasn't even turned around yet. Jim Tunney, I think, was actually on the part of the field which was lighted now. As you can see right there, from that vantage point, that's the part where you're in the light and you cannot quite see. Look at him squinting. You can see that. You're right. That was a judgment call that he just missed. Jeff Gossett will be kicking. Mitchell Price is the return man. Got it. Picks it up and is hit at the two-yard line. Elvis Patterson. The toast of the Coliseum. 43 yards on the kick. <laughs> Tackle by number 43. We'll be back in just a moment. Raiders lead it 24 to 7. All right, America, time to check in briefly with Rich Goins on the billboard in Denver. The lead has been trimmed to 7, but do you get the feeling you're coming down, Rich, my boy? Well, I feel real good today, Bob. I just want to thank you for the basket that you sent to, uh, you know, get me well. But I think I'm coming down tonight, and I'll have better care at home. Your first stop is the shower, I take it. Uh, the bathtub, grab a couple beers, I'll be home. Well, back to Charlie Jones and Todd Christensen, who I know, like the rest of the world, are watching this story as it develops breathlessly. Charles? <laughs> No, Bob, actually, I'm waiting for my package from you. It, uh, I guess Santa's a little late, but I know that, uh, that you'll send something nice. Harold Green, the ball carrier, and he is stuffed by the defense of the Raiders. So it'll be second. We talked about, you know, the offense of Cincinnati and the, the fact that the players come up with names and they have a lot of fun with the ideas. Well, some of their players, we talked the names of their plays, we talked to Sam. I said, this, this week we have a Montoya. We have a Yogi. You said that would be... Uh, Ain't over till it's over play. And uh, they have the Dover. So also we have the Mayflower and the Beacon, so we want to give an equal time. So we're thinking with microphones on the field, we might even go commercial and sell it. Coca-Cola on three. Hi. <laughs> Pick up a little extra money. Harold Green again, and he is bent back just shy of the five-yard line. Clock continuing to move. The Raiders on top, 24 to 7. Deep in their own territory here. I'm surprised at the conservative nature of it. I realize they're down 17, and it's not likely for them to come back here. But this would be an opportune time for Sam Weiss to see how this young quarterback can operate under some pressure, under some adverse circumstances. Inevitably, quarterbacks come in to mop up games and just hand off. This is a chance to give this young man a chance to throw the ball and see what he can do. And it is incomplete. Yesterday at practice in Cincinnati, they were two hours late because of the wind, and they had to stop in Kansas City and refuel. We were talking with Mike Brown, and when you kind of play the games of who is left for Cincinnati, this game, of course, is important, but the game next week is the one that is really important to them. Well, that's right, because they have the tie-break advantages. If they end up tied with Houston at the end because of their division record, they would <coughs> they would have the advantage. Their problem now is regarding Pittsburgh. They have no control over Pittsburgh, so what, in effect, they would hope for is to beat Houston and then hope that at the this, this season-ending game, which would be in the Astrodome against the Steelers, that Houston would defeat the Steelers. And here is Tim Brown on the return, and he is out of bounds at the 31-yard line. 39 yards on the kick, a 13-yard return, and we will return in just a moment. 24-7 Los Angeles. This is Charlie Jones and Todd Christensen. Four minutes and seven seconds left in the ballgame here. 
Raiders up 24 to 7. And Los Angeles has the ball at the Cincinnati 31 yard line and Vince Evans has come in at quarterback replacing Jay Schrader. Steve Berline and James Fitzpatrick, the two inactives for the Raiders. Greg Taylor and Lewis Phillips out with injuries. The inactives for Cincinnati. And Napoleon McCallum is the ball carrier. If I could abuse a little Shakespearean sonnet here, it would be Perseverance, thy name is Vince Evans. Vince Evans there with the Chicago Bears, and when they drafted Jim McMahon, they said, thanks for coming, but we'll see you later. Then he goes into the Chicago Blitz, hangs out a little while. That league goes defunct, and no one is interested in him. Vince Evans then crosses the picket line in 1987 as a replacement player, plays very effectively for the Raiders, and they keep him around. And so he's been off and on with the Raiders, cut, waved, I don't know, at least a half dozen times, but this year, because of the holdout of Steve Berline, he has been the backup for Los Angeles Raiders the entire season. Second down and six. McCallum again gets the carry. Also, He's going to have a couple of yards on the play. Also staying on that story with regards to Vince Evans at 35 years of age, it just goes to show that you can hang in there for a period of time. And the Los Angeles Raiders are one of the teams that really believe that experience is of value. Take a look at this graphic right here. 15 players, 30 or over on this team. This is an organization that's not afraid of the fact that, oh, okay, the guy's had eight years in the league, so he might be getting along on the two. The experience factor, particularly now in December, heading into the playoffs, is something that's very significant, particularly in the locker room. They're down and four. Jamie Holland and Sam Grady are in the ballgame. So the Raiders here with a chance to pick up a little experience for those players who see most of the action on special teams, but not that much on offense. Vance Mueller is the carrier, and we have whistle sounding. In case you follow the career of McCallum, uh, the two carries he has had here. Ball start, number 76, and it'll still be third down. That's on Steve Wisniewski. The two carries he has had here gives a uh, number 41, Napoleon McCallum, a total of 10 carries for 25 yards rushing on the year. So, you know, obviously he hadn't seen that much play. Well, he had a terrific career there at the Naval Academy, and of course they, they somewhat bent the rules so he could play professional football earlier than his five-year commitment. But he's a terrific young man. Teammate of mine for three years when I was there with the Raiders. Later with the Chargers and then released and now back with the Raiders, courtesy of Steve Ortmeyer, who is then the general manager with the Chargers, now back with the Raiders in a similar capacity. Can do a lot of things. Return punts, play both fullback and halfback. Charge! Come out! And a timeout charge to the Los Angeles Raiders. Raiders 24, Cincinnati 7. Time remaining in the game, Raiders 24, Cincinnati 7. Charlie Bowe is still arguing the point to the other players. Honest, he had the angle on me. That's what he's trying to tell him right there. He's talking about Rod Jones of the Cincinnati Bengals who caught him at the one-yard line. <laughs> And Boomer Esiason. A little different reaction on that side of the ball. Groin bothering him, but he got a big game next week. Still still within their power. Little missing on the handoff, bouncing off of Vince Evans, and he goes to the 25-yard line. Gain of five, the big game, it, the big play of this game came in the third quarter. In the first to Bo Jackson, just as it did a year ago. And in case you were not with us, at that time in the third quarter, we'll give you another look at it. Well, this is a sweep to the left, and if you have your history, remember the Super Bowl, or I should say, almost the distance. Rod Jones in heavy pursuit, and everybody's got their arms up, assuming it's touchdown. Nobody catches Bo Jackson, right? Right? Wrong. Right? Wrong. Rod Jones, one yard line. And now, the two-minute warning. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Charlie Jones and Todd Christensen back at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. The lights are on. It's been an absolutely gorgeous day today here in Southern California. The Raiders out in front of Cincinnati by a score of 24 to 7. And it is a fourth down with the ball at the 25-yard line. Well, 
wonder if they'll finally let Vince Evans pass. They got the three wide receivers in. As he gives off to Mueller, Mueller has the first down. A flag is down as he goes to the 16-yard line. Chuck Panama, Ron Lux, our spotters, Dennis Manish, our statistician. Pleasure to work with you, gentlemen. Have a happy holiday, and we'll see you back here in a couple of weeks for the San Diego Raider game. Holding, 64, still four down. That's on Todd Pete. Today's Ronald McDonald Children's Charity Player of the Game is Bo Jackson. McDonald's and NBC will donate $5,000 on behalf of all the players selected in today's games to Ronald McDonald's Children's Charities to help give kids a better tomorrow. Charlie, if you'd have told me before the game that, hey, you know what? The player of the game is only going to have six carries, I'd have said, get out of here. <laughs> but if we'd have told you he was going to have an 88-yard run, yeah, okay. And be above 100 yards for the third straight game rushing. Mueller is dropped at the 35-yard line. And so Cincinnati takes over on downs with 149 left in the ball game. For those of you who follow the Bengals, another thing that we might point out that uh, Max Montoya told us about the offense of Cincinnati come to the line of scrimmage, and and now it is Todd Philcox who is the quarterback, and he will call two plays, come to the line of scrimmage, and then pick the play with an audible at the line of scrimmage that fits the defense that the Raiders are in. You know, one of the problems, speaking of plays, Charlie, is the inability to get a lot off, and I think a lot of that is the time factor. And he hands to Sanford Jennings. I think that's only the 53rd or 54th play for the Cincinnati Bengals today. And Sam Weiss was saying that that's part of the problem that they've had this year is the fact that they have not been able to get as many offensive plays as they would like. Take a look at their average last year, nearly 10 plays different, and a lot of that certainly has to do with the fact that there is a very conscious effort, you know, to make the games shorter. But, of course, what that does is that takes away a big play, you know, takes away one or two big plays a week from a big play offense like the Cincinnati Bengals, very dependent upon that. Averaging nine plays less this year per game than last year. Nice play action fake. And the pass is overthrown. Jim Riggs, the intended receiver. Now, Bo Jackson, oh, come on, you know what, that disappoints me. Do something that's original. He dumped the, dumped the thing of Gatorade on Art Shell. This guarantees the Los Angeles Raiders in making the playoffs. <laughs> and in slow motion. Take a look at Bo Jackson taking a page out of Harry Carson's book. And still he misses. Look at that. He misses partly. How could you miss that body? Come on, Bo. Boy, I tell you what. Bo knows a lot of things. Bo don't know Gatorade dumping. <laughs> Congratulations, though, to Art Shell. This, this will be the first time since 1985 that the Los Angeles Raiders have indeed made the playoffs. And it also guarantees them their first winning season since that time. But that's also very impressive. 15th playoff berth in the club's now 30-year history. And when we talked with Art yesterday, entirely different than when we talked to him the fourth game of the season. It was surprising. He seemed very relaxed because, you know, here it is December. But I think that when we talked to him earlier, he was caught up in what everybody else was talking about, how great he was. And he told me then, he says, Todd, I haven't done anything yet. Now you'd have to say they're in the playoffs. He has done he something. He has done something. You're right. We'll go on sale starting tomorrow morning at the Raider ticket office in El Segundo. At the LA Sports Arena box office. And at more than Todd 200 Pitt, tickets. The quarterback for the Bengals. The third of all Southern game. California. And he gives off to Stanford Jennings. Alex Gordon makes the tackle. We'll take the final countdown. And it's now official. Raiders 24, Cincinnati 7. Raiders are in the playoffs. Alex Gordon, NFL Live in New York City. And Bob Costas. Bob?